this is a very important species. This is the species that fed the eastward migration of the Native American and the westward migration of the European American. It's a symbol of and a bit of a litmus test for the sagebrush ecosystem. And they serve as a pretty good umbrella for all the inhabitants of that biome. If we can't be good enough stewards to keep sage grouse on the landscape, then we're probably failing as stewards uh, overall. Usually if you've got healthy rangelands for sage grouse, you've got healthy rangelands for mule deer and antelope and really any of your other species that tend to be an indicator of the health, overall health of your rangeland. The bird itself, nobody has anything against the sage grouse. It's a great, beautiful creature that God has put here and nobody wants to see it go away. We also want to see a balance maybe of regulation and common sense when it comes to the sage grouse and its effect on different industries. The sage grouse conservation in Wyoming has a fairly lengthy history. It goes back to some of the early observations of some of the uh, uh, early trappers and explorers. But we know this was an incredibly prevalent and prolific species that showed up in 13 western states and many provinces in Canada. And then of course there was a market hunting period of steep declines in sage grouse numbers. Our efforts really ramped up again to the point where today sage grouse conservation is coined the largest single species conservation effort ever undertaken worldwide. We have all become aware of changes on the habitat, largely fragmenting kinds of changes like gas development, oil development, wind energy development, uranium mining, etc. And we're aware that there's been grazing. The speculation that in this area is that the sage grouse have abandoned a lot of these leks because of the methane traffic. We had a lot of CBM production in the area. When we look at a sage grouse, you know, if you see one out driving down the road or walking out in the sagebrush, they appear to be very docile, not necessarily afraid. So it looks like, well, yeah, I'm not bothering this bird. What they don't like is a lot of road traffic, a lot of noise. They like a pretty pristine environment. Because we impact sage grouse that, that way, we have to, if we're going to conserve them, we have to curtail some of our own activities through regulation. Well, the, I think the Endangered Species Act is what uh, was the basis for the concern about the sage grouse. It turned into a controversy, maybe for the same reason. So sage grouse have been petitioned for listing under the uh, Threatened and Endangered Species Act numerous times over the last 20 years. The Endangered Species Act can be kind of a scary thing to a landowner being worried about how the regulations will affect day-to-day -day operations on a ranch. And I think that not just ranching, but the energy industry as well. Certainly a lot of the state uh, sponsored programs would go away. They would be a federal listed bird and all parties would be subject to the um, provisions of the Endangered Species Act, which would be more restrictive to development, things like energy development, possibly federal land grazing, potentially activities on private lands as well. Just in, in Wyoming, they were looking at a loss of about $8 billion in revenue if the bird had been listed and stopped everything. So we went about starting to ask for people to help us to build a caring system for the sagebrush ecosystem. There was also uh, court action that uh, told the service they were going to have to reanalyze their decision not to list the bird. This is back in uh, 2007. Uh, Governor Friedenthal saw that this was going to uh, be a, a bigger issue than what the local working groups could handle on their own, that there needed to be some statewide uh, and even range-wide coordination. He created his uh, sage grouse implementation team at that time. So we had gas developers and miners and ranchers all on board this committee. And believe me, there were some heated discussions at those first meetings. That team uh, uh, met for about a year, developed uh, a series of recommendations, and that resulted in the first governor's executive order regarding sage grouse uh, in the fall of 2008. We have gone to Washington, D.C all stumping for the same side of this issue. And we've had both Democrat and Republican 
governors and leadership pushing for the same protections. Uh, we have found where sage grouse are doing the best and we've mapped those areas. Those uh, have become the core areas that have more restrictive policies associated with them in terms of development. And therefore we have reduced conventional drilling, the overhead old-fashioned type, over 60 percent and we have increased directional drilling over 1600 percent. So we're still accessing the product that everybody's after, but we're not interrupting the habitat. We're not cutting it to ribbons. You do research, you find out what's the, the least you can do before the grouse begin to recede. And we found that anytime you did more than 5%, actually 3% disturbance, you start to see a diminishing of the population. So those were the limits that we placed. Part of our ranch is in the core area, and that has had an impact on ranching, not necessarily a positive one. Having to go through the game and fish in order to put in a pipeline, for example, or an irrigation system, just because we're in the core area, when in fact, our ranching practices and the sage grouse have existed together here for, for many, many years, and I don't see that that's going to be necessary to do that. Most ranching activities are compatible with sage grouse if they're managed properly. Now that's keeping the native vegetation on the landscape, not removing sagebrush. That's going to be compatible with sage grouse. So the phrase, uh, what's good for the herd is good for the bird and vice versa, is true. It's better to be on the front end of something that you think is going to be a problem than on the back end. And so if you think that somebody is going to come in and start trying to change your management for you, it's a lot better to be involved in the front end on those discussions about how that might look or what things we can do to be proactive about it. Our current practices, we started implementing them because of some working groups and things like that in the area when the sage grouse was a, initially started to be a big concern out here. So we've kind of tailored a lot of our grazing operation to be beneficial to sage grouse, which in turn has been beneficial to the cattle, so it's kind of been a win-win. We saw some improvement in our calf weights by rotationally grazing. We actually added that first year probably somewhere around 25 pounds per head roughly on those calves, which was pretty incredible, we thought. The sage grouse initiative was probably one of the most important things that we got involved with as a conservation effort on our part to uh, help the sage grouse, putting ramps for example, in the tanks so that if the sage grouse um, gets in there, why well, it can get out. And range monitoring, we need to monitor our range, whether it's for the sage grouse, whether it's for our cows, either one. So I think that there's uh, important things there in, in some of these programs like the sage grouse initiative that does, does good for the ranch as well as the sage grouse. And in the monitoring over the past three years, We've seen an increase in the birds. We'd like to take credit for it with our conservation efforts, but I'm not sure that's the case. The sage grouse in Wyoming, at least, um, are, are very uh, cyclic uh, in nature. Since the 1990s, when we started paying more attention to, to sage grouse, where we've at least leveled off that decline. And we've had some pretty good increases in some years, but um, we aren't continuing to go down at the same rate we were a couple decades ago. So that's, that's encouraging and, and certainly where uh, sage grouse habitat is intact, you know, we see good numbers of sage grouse. The, the listing decision itself and when they said it was not warranted, uh, that was an end of a chapter um, in probably a never ending story. That if we were to just celebrate a victory and walk away from the issue we would be right back in a listing decision very soon because the Fish and Wildlife Service made their decision based on the promises that were made in terms of how we were going to continue management. Uh, we really can't let our foot off the gas pedal in terms of, of conservation. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in our own program that we forget to smell the roses and I think that the sage grouse is uh, is a great bird and, and I've been rewarded by paying closer attention to it.